You're watching BPS Customs coverage of CES 2017 in Las Vegas. Get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos on the hottest trends in tech. So this afternoon I paid a visit to our friends over at EVGA. EVGA has been a supporter of the channel for quite a while and I wanted to see what Jacob and company had brought with them and was honestly quite surprised at the sheer number of new products they'll be offering in 2017. Of course first off is the star of CES so far, Z270 motherboards. EVGA has stuck to their guns and carried over the majority of design and feature implementation from their Stinger, For the Win, and Classified series boards that originally shipped with Z170 chipsets. You won't find any RGB LED headers, custom VRM water cooling, or extravagant new selling points here. EVGA's boards have always been rock solid and stable for me, and I expect nothing but more of the same from these. You could expect the Z270 Stinger. Z270 for the WinK and Z270 Classified for $199, $249, and $299 respectively, all by the middle or end of January 2017. Of course, EVGA does more than just motherboards, and last year they got into the case game with their DG line. The DG85, 86, and 87 were all based on a very large and heavy full tower chassis, and EVGA has listened to customer feedback and decided to trim things down in a big way. This is the DG7, which will launch around Computex time in June. The DG7 is a mid-sized mid-tower featuring a tempered glass side panel, premium chassis materials, and a power supply shroud. The version they were showing off here is still not finalized, but the retail product will look very similar, although perhaps with glass that isn't quite as dark. No pricing information yet on this case. Maybe what EVGA is best known for, however, is graphics cards. When the ACX 3.0 cooler was launched with the NVIDIA 10 series cards last year, they originally were hailed as some of the best new designs, featuring strong cooling and silent operation. However, there was an issue with some cards overheating due to missing memory module thermal pads, and that whole situation has given EVGA a chance to reevaluate the design of their cards in a big way. Their new cooler will be called ICX and will exist alongside the ACX version initially. The ICX versions of the Superclock and For the Win cards feature an entirely new cooler design under the metal shroud, even though at first glance they appear almost identical. Cooling performance is said to be much improved even on the hybrid card, which will soon be available with quick disconnects. Why? Well, EVGA is also bringing to market their own ecosystem of water cooling components, all fitted with their quick disconnect system. The pumps are from Asatec and all available components come pre-filled, including an extension hose if you're working with an abnormally large chassis or need just some more slack to reach the radiators. Radiators will be available in 120, thick and thin, 240, and 360 millimeter flavors. Look for the new quick disconnect system to come to market around March of this year. Although we don't have pricing yet on the user configurable stuff, EVGA is also introducing their own AIO coolers, available in both 120 and 280 millimeter sizes. You'll be able to find these in stores in February for $89 to $129, depending on size. The SC17 with a GTX 1070 launched last year, and although there is a niche market for laptops that large, most users want something a little more portable. Enter the SC15, a Kaby Lake powered GTX 1060 wielding thin and light laptop with a 120Hz G-Sync enabled 1080p screen. It also has a full and proper UAFI to let you tweak to your heart's content, although the CPU will be a locked SKU. You can pick these up starting in June and pricing is not yet finalized, although they should be between $1,500 and $1,700. Lastly, EVGA's new B3 line of power supplies with manual fan control and a new interior fan design should hit the market soon as well. Thanks for watching, guys.